I thought this was an interesting clip that was uploaded on the Fire and the Kids subreddit because I feel like this kind of gives us an insight into why Brendan has these weird kind of beliefs that he does, like in terms of, oh, I don't believe in drinking in water and all that sort of nonsense. This is a clip taken from a recent interview that Rogan had with Gad Sad. And um, Gad Sad, number one, is looking really good. He's clearly lost a lot of weight. But the funny thing about it is that Brent, Joe Rogan's got the same opinion as Brendan about drinking fucking coffee as a replacement for drinking water so the idea behind it is that all hydration is good hydration you don't have to specifically drink water which is fucking wild but um this is a clip here taken from that clip from the episode and this maybe is a reason why brendan has this weird obsession with only drinking fucking coffee and never drinking water even as a former athlete and shit it's absolutely wild so let's play this clip now you go on a 30 minute conversation yeah, but this drugs. is like a good drug like <laughs> caffeine is it, it right. like there's whatever bad effects you get from coffee they're so minimal there's even like links to like good health benefits from it yeah i think there's worry people used to worry about dehydration but i don't think they worry about that as much anymore <laughs> when it comes to drinking coffee they used to think that if you drank a lot of coffee you would get dehydrated but there's a certain amount of hydration you're actually getting from drinking coffee too so it's like kind of complicated because it is kind of a diuretic, but it yeah. also like you're also drinking i wish somebody would just say to him what about drinking piss then why don't you drink your own piss I'd wish someone just said that to him. How about drinking your own fucking urine? I'm sure Rogan's tried it because he's one of those type of dudes, right? Anything for longevity to keep him looking ripped and lean and shit. But that's absolutely crazy thing to say. Even if there wasn't any evidence to support the drinking of water or the drinking of coffee, just the feeling alone of a hot summer's day coming into your house or having somebody hand you a glass of cold water, getting a bottle of cold water from the fridge. All of those things should be enough of an emotion, should be enough, sorry, of a feeling for you to flip in, want to drink water. That taste of having your first quenched with a nice glass of water, nothing else in it is absolutely fantastic. Don't get me wrong. I do feel a little bit bad for people because I was the same. I mentioned it before. I kind of grew up in the household when I was really young where my parents used to buy me and my brothers like bottles of fucking orange aid, lemonade and Coca-Cola, but not even Coca-Cola, like cola shit, which is even worse, right? So like cola from like Audi and shit. My mom, would, Cause you know, we we're flipping free boys kind of growing a shit and we didn't have much money. So she'd buy us like massive two liter bottles of like cola, orange aid and fucking lemonade. And we drunk that for the majority of our, you know, youth when we were kids and shit. So I'm kind of happy that even though we did that, for some reason i don't know who did it i don't know if it was my mum did it on you know on purpose or um if it was us in general we wanted to change our habits but somewhere along the line we kind of as a house stopped buying soda and then we started drinking water and then from then on i've developed a taste for water i developed a fucking habit of always drinking water and i don't really drink fizzy drinks anymore at all if the only time i really drink fizzy drinks is if i'm either hungover i like a good glass of orange juice for some reason i'd love to buy orange juice with bits in it and then I also, I also like to drink fizzy drinks, maybe with a mixer, if I'm drinking some alcohol, right? If I've got some vodka or some whatever, I might have some, you know, of soda with that. But I rarely buy a soda to drink on its own. And I'm thankful for that because I know, having looked at for some people like Wings of Redemption, how difficult it is clearly to fucking kick a sugar habit. Like sugar seems to be one of those fucking things that seems to be even harder to kick than flipping class A drugs. That's how crazy it seems to some people because some people say like, you know, they fucking quit chocolate and they start getting headaches and shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, honestly, sugar is wild. So I'm lucky, really fortunate that we kind of killed drinking soda when I was at home, when I was living back at home. I killed that before I kind of stepped out into adulthood because I'd hate to be those people now, you know, because I saw some guy actually on social media, saw some black guy, I think in America who was choking drinking water like he never drunk he never drinks water and his friends were trying to make him drink a whole bottle full of water like a gallon or something and this guy was legitimately throwing up at the taste of water because he's never used to drinking it i would hate to be the adult that doesn't find water tasty like even i think brennan Schaub's wife said something like that recently you know, that she never drunk water I, I don't know like people like that your breath must smell wild if you're only drinking fizzy drinks like i can't imagine how that makes any sort of sense it's such a bizarre thing in my head but um hey everybody's different but one thing you realize also over time i think it's an age thing as well maybe it's an age thing i don't know if you guys and gals in the chat can agree with me here i'm 
pretty much still a Rogan fan. I love watching his podcast. I think still bang for buck Rogan. So has the best one out there in terms of randomly chucking it on and seeing somebody that you don't really know about talking some really good, interesting shit. Right. Um, the recent episode now with Joe Rogan, I think there's one with um, the country singer Zach Bryan, I think. Right. I don't know much about him. I've heard a few tunes of his here and there, but I don't really know much about Zach, the person. Right. So I still think um, Br Joe Rogan's podcast bang for buck is still the best because I can clock into that Zach Bryan show and find out a little bit more about him. Right. So it's kind of, you know, so I wouldn't have listened to him if it wasn't for Zach, for Joe Rogan. But I found that with age, the older that I've got, the less I listen to Joe Rogan for like life advice. Like I don't, I just don't pay it no mind because he's just talking out of his ass for the most part. And it's just stuff coming from it. his own personal opinion. That's very biased and it's only for a particular prism. But I think when I was younger, I was listening to Joe Rogan. He was like, sort of like a, like not even a, a mentor, like, you kind of trusted what he said about life. You kind of took it to heart. Like, yeah, Rogan said this, Rogan said that. But now I just, I just completely f phase that stuff out and just focus on the stuff I want to listen to. Like, you know, he maybe wants to make me laugh. He wants to tell me something funny or interesting you saw on social media, some whatever else he wants to talk about. But I don't really listen to him for the life advice stuff because it's just not the one. So I'm never going to sit here and listen to Rogan and think, oh yeah, Rogan doesn't drink water. So I'm not going to drink water. That's not going to happen. I'm just going to skip over that and just continue with the episode. I don't know if it's an age thing. Maybe it's an age thing. I don't know if that is a thing. Yeah, people are saying, well, um, you're growing out of it yeah exactly 730 maybe that is a thing same bro said cloud 2k20 casey shift said i like rogan but only watch if he's a guest i like yeah you know what i do actually casey um casey i do the opposite of that i actually usually tune into rogan when it's somebody i don't know because i feel like those were those are the best ones like for for the most part if it's rogan with a comedian i just skip it for the most part especially if it's a comedian rogue no, especially if it's a comedian that rogan knows or it's a comedian that isn't that well known because if they're not that if they're not that well known they're going to start licking rogan's ass because they're happy they got on the show and if they a comedian that rogan knows they're gonna it's gonna turn into a you know there's only one thousand of them conversation it's gonna become one of those fucking circle jerks but i found joe rogan episodes are always the best when it's somebody you don't actually know those are always the best ones in my opinion i love those episodes so um yeah i don't know maybe it's an age thing maybe it isn't who knows either way um, i'm happy over time that i'm not taking everything to heart and i'm taking everything too seriously because fuck you know imagine listening to rogan now and he's telling you not to drink water <laughs> like don't drink water do not drink it only drink flipping um <laughs> only drink flipping <laughs> only drink coffee coffee only all day um age effing dude's a health nut but looks yeah that's the thing also i've noticed jordan ray thank you you said that jordan ray said dude's a health nut but looks shit for his age i never noticed that and i guess now that i'm older and i'm seeing stuff and whatever i'm noticing more how i wouldn't want to look like joe rogan like don't get me wrong body wise for somebody his age he looks amazing but then at what cost because his face looks fucking wild do you know what i mean like that's the issue at hand like he doesn't actually you know it's not the peak physical conditioning you would have wanted in, in the past but i still think rogan's influence is incredible because i think i genuinely wouldn't have got into the ufc if it wasn't for rogan because i started watching rogan before i started watching the ufc that kind of thing i, I kind of got into it through him um i, I did jujitsu for the first time because of rogan i did muay thai because of rogan for the first time um you know like all the, i got introduced to fucking david goggins because of no david goggins because of rogan no, I think David Goggins might have been because of Tim Ferriss. I'm not too sure. One or the other. No, David Goggins was Rogan. And I got introduced to Jocko Wilnick through Tim Ferriss. So if it wasn't for Tim, two, that's a, that's a funny thing, isn't it? Two white men really taught me a lot. <laughs> two very, very white men taught me a lot in my life. Joe Rogan and Tim Ferriss. They, they played an, a really influential part in my fucking <laughs> upbringing and worldview. Rogan and fucking Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss on the aspect of like, the four hour work week like it got me thinking about you know working in a way where i wasn't only exchanging my time for money because i think before reading the four hour work week i never knew there was such a thing as like being able to like you know 
have a side hustle that could essentially you can maybe work on for maybe four hours a week quote unquote and then have the rest of the time to do the things that you love because that's what the four hour work people is all about you know it kind of got a bad rap because of the name it's kind of a marketing gimmick which worked really well the four hour work week but the whole premise behind it was hey let's get you a flipping side hustle a business that you can do that only requires you to do four hours of work per week that can cover your basic kind of needs and then the rest of the time you can do the things that you actually want to do so you can actually go learn a language learn salsa learn martial arts blah de, blah and i think the idea behind it also was to kind of lower your expenses so i think tim ferris that book advises people to encourage people to go and live somewhere where the you know the cost of living is cheap so you can get more out of your money the whole, whole pre the first time i got introduced to the idea of like um remote assistance because there's that thing a lot right on fiverr and whatever maybe where you can hire virtual assistants that can like you know organize your calendar and whatever maybe all that sort of stuff so that was all really important and rogan came in and was more so the whole like um chasing after your dream being the hero of your own story martial arts um you know perfecting your craft because one thing about rogan that i've always loved is that even though i don't think he's funny at all i think rogan this is a weird thing to say but i think rogan is a far better example far better person for like a young comedian to kind of look at as somebody to kind of emulate because he's not funny but he kind of willed himself into being funny and being a comedian if you understand what i mean like rogan was i don't think never naturally meant to be a stand-up comedian personally maybe a sketch comic cool but to be on a comedy you know not gonna happen so i think he actually forced himself into being a comedian through just pure effort pure hard work so i think most people should look at him as an example as opposed to looking like a kevin hart or like a flipping dave Chappelle or david tell or lucy k those guys are just naturally from birth like funny and witty but i think rogan had to kind of practice to get funny so i think you can apply rogan's kind of methodology of working hard because he always talks about how much he writes how much he goes up on stage like he clearly works a lot like he essentially built his own comedy club so he could have somewhere to go work you know without interruption so clearly he shows that work ethic is what kind of or as brenda says that work ethnic is what got him where he's got to so that sort of stuff should be more motivating for most people because he's more similar to most people he's not that funny but you know he got there through pure will and effort but again what do i know what do i know enough of me slobbering on fucking joe rogan's fucking schlong in it why did that turn into eh? where'd that come from there was me just going full fucking ham putting my head back in the ponytail and fucking schlonging you know what i mean going all fucking sloppy toppy on rogan there for a little bit Ugh. you guys should stop me in the chat i don't know why you let me go on like that for so long <laughs> okay rogan that good sloppy toppy like ugh, i feel disgusted <laughs> Bloody hell, you should have stopped me, man. You chat guys, you should have fucking stopped me. <laughs>